it's Sandy from Parkerlings.com, and today you find me in the craft room. I am working on a bunch of rags. Um, these are old bed sheets that we got out of a storage unit that had stains or just were not ones that we would would be able to reuse. So I am converting them into rags and um, covers for my dust mop, um, which I've got here. This is the frame for my dust mop. And I wanted to show you how I convert my bed sheets, my raggedy bed sheets into dust mop covers. So come along and see how I make this craft. To start out with, you're going to measure your dust mop frame. And so I'm going to take my tape measure and get it measured. It measures 15 inches by four inches. And over here, there is a two, two and a half inch gap so that the mop head can swivel both directions. So what I'm going to do is take those 15 by four by two and a half inch measures and allow for a seam allowance. I'm going to give myself one inch on each dimension. So, and a little bit more to be honest with you. So 16 to 17 inches for, for the length. And then I double the width. So this what this measured four. So this is going to be eight. And then I'm going to also give it an extra two inches. So I'm going to make it 10, 34, let's say by 10, give yourself two inches of, of width. And then for this space here, I'm going to give myself an inch more or less, because this is an inch and a half, but I find that I can give myself an inch and it gives my, me enough clearance by three inches down. So let me show you how I put that onto my pattern pieces. The first step then is to cut your flat sheet or your fitted sheet into strips. And the easiest way to do this is to measure one of the lengths of your dust mop measurement. So remember we had 10 inches by 34 inches. So I'm going to take the 10 inch measure and I'm starting after the seam on the far edge. I'm working within this, within the existing hems and I'm going to cut then measure to 10 inches. And I'm going to put a little cut into the sheet at the 10 inch mark. So let me do that. So here I am, and it doesn't have to be exactly precise. The fact it's a very forgiving, you're only making rags at the end of the day. It's a very forgiving design. So here I've cut and you want to make sure you cut through the hem so that then what you can do because it's a woven fabric, you can tear and it will tear a straight 10 inch line. And there I've, I've just cut at the other hem. And now I have got a piece, a strip, that measures 10 inches all the way across. So the next step is to get your width measurement and because it's a double-sided two-ply dust mop pattern. Uh, we're going to go to the 34. Cut a little strip and tear it down. And again, it doesn't need to be precise, just more or less. Be careful not to cut your tape measure. And what you can do with the spare, um, if you've got if you've got spare, you can um, fold it in half and sew and make a dust make a dust rag with it, um, a nice two ply dust rag, so it's got some body. But now we've got our 10 by 34 
um, inch piece. So now we have our two ply. I folded it in half on the long side and it now measures the 17. What I have to do now is put in the little insert for the handle of the dust mop. So what I'm going to do, what I'm doing then is, fold, is folding it neatly so that all the sides match up and then folding it in half because this will effectively be the, um, the design. And so now I'm going to measure for center. So if I measure for center, this is 17, so my center would be eight and a half more or less, which is right about there. Then I'm going to measure up three inches from the edge. And I'll use a pencil or a pen and I'll give my, and I'll, and I'll just draw around. And now my tape measure is about a half an inch wide. So if I do two of them, that'll give me about an inch. So you want about an inch across and three inches down. And it does not have to be precise, but more or less, you know. And of course, it will. This will depend on your particular dust mop head, if that's what you are. If, if you have, if you have one that's slightly different. But then, I uh, cutting out of all of the layers, I will um, just cut this tab out of all the layers. There we go. Okay, and now I will undo it like so. You can pin it if you feel it's necessary for you. I don't personally feel ne it necessary to pin it. I'm just going to work to keep it even. And I will go, go around and sew. I will sew around the entire the entire bit, leaving just an inch or two at the end for me to turn it inside out, or turn it right side out, okay? This particular bed sheet doesn't, ha doesn't appear to have a wrong side and a right side, but if yours does, you will, you will want to make sure that the right sides are facing and that the wrong sides are up when you do this step. In terms of my seam allowance, what I am doing is, if I measure it, I believe it's about a quarter of an inch. Yeah, it's about it's about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Um, I'm going just to the, I'm making sure that my bit, that my two pieces of fabric are just to the off side of the presser foot. And I am using a pretty variegated thread in both my bobbin and my top thread just to give it a pop of color since it's a white bed sheet. You can choose to use any color thread that blends in or contrasts with the bed sheet that you use. So here we go. So now that I have all of the seams connected, what I'm going to do is clip the corners so that they lay a little bit nicer, trimming around the outside corners and clipping just in, just into the inside corners, being careful not to go past the, um, not to clip the actual sewing that I did. And after that, after that's all done, then we will 
turn it right side out. There we go. So now I will turn it right side out, find my corner. And what you can do is use a tool. I'm just going to use the base of my scissors to get the corners all um, tight, all pushed out fully. So I'll just use the scissors in a closed position, obviously, and stick them in and then push, being careful not to actually push all the way through, but being, but pushing as, as well as I can to get this, to get the corner out. And just continue around until that is all done. So now I'm all turned out and I've got this open spot where I, where, that I used for the turnout. I'm going to turn under the seam allowance there and that'll be the first part I put into the sewing machine. Now I am going to top stitch around the entire piece um, and start with this part just so that I can encase that opening. So I'll put it into my machine and this time I am trying to get my top stitch as close to the edge as I can so I am using my feed dogs and I am going just to the outside of the inner of the two feed dogs which is about an eighth of an inch. Okay, we're almost done now. So now we have a two ply wrap. And the only thing that's left is to fold it in half so that we can and, and sew the two halves. It will come across and be connected like so. Okay, so let me show you how I do. I fold it in half and I will on one side I will sew around the short end and all the way down to the long side to where the notch is in the in the middle of the fabric and then on on the other side I will sew the short end and only down an inch and you'll and and then I'll turn it right sides out so that the seams are on the inside. I'll show you that now. And again, I'm trying I'm trying to get it as small a seam as possible. So, stitching a lot pretty much along the same line as my top stitch. And I'll reinforce this by going backwards a little bit. And then on the other side, I will do a similar thing. Hold on, I'm just going to chip, snip my extra threads here. So now I will do the same thing, but I, on this side, I will only go down about an, an inch or two on the, on the side. And again, I will reinforce this, uh, this seam. And now again, I am going to clip off my extra, my excess threads. I'm going to give a little clip at each of the corners, being careful not to cut the thread that I just sewed in. I'll do the same thing up here on the other side. And now I will turn it inside out. And again, push my corners through. And there you have it, a dust mop cover. 
and you can see how it fits my dust mop. You put it into one side. On one side, it fits all the way in, and on the other side, then it's perhaps a little bit tight, but that's good because then it will stay on. And it fits like that. So there you have it. And and it work and it flips well and it works just like so on my dirty, dusty floor. Picking up really well. You can see why with two black dogs I need lots of these dust mop covers. I hope you've enjoyed crafting with me today. Um, I hope that you will think about how you can use your bed sheets the next time that you've got that you get a new set and need to deal with the old ones. They don't have to go into the landfill. They can be reused just like this. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. God bless. Bye-bye.